Robin means business. So welcome to the third round of the RCCO Race Home Charity Racing Series and we can see we are in Barcelona. So after the opening race in Spa Francorchamps, Monza, we have a different racetrack now. It's a Formula One racetrack. Tom Christen, then our co-host, is with me as well as Frank Bieler, both very experienced in motor racing, Le Mans, DTM, a lot of things which I have been doing. So Tom, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Barcelona. I guess you have spent some days there. Barcelona, it's a, yeah, it's a fantastic circuit. Uh, got a, a lot of different types of corners, good rhythm, it's quite abrasive. So depending on what will be the, um, decided in terms of uh, tire wear, it normally it is a very hard, hard circuit on tire wear. You need a well-balanced cars to, to tackle all the, um, the different um, parts of the track. The last sector is, is very, very slow whereas the first sector is uh, very fast and, uh, and uh, you need commitment, especially corner eight and nine coming over the crest of the hill. So um, a circuit which I look forward to see these great drivers enjoy. So Frank, we have seen a lot of action in the first two races on these classic tracks in Spa from Cochon and Mots, a lot of overtaking, a lot of slipstreaming. What will you see today on this racetrack here in Barcelona? I think it will be very interesting again. Uh, it's it's a different layout, of course. There's only one long straight start and finish line uh, or start and finish straight. So there's a good chance to uh, catch the uh, slipstream again and overtake the other one, the one in front. But all the other parts are very fluent, uh, one corner after the other. So I guess their overtaking is uh, pretty difficult. They should concentrate on uh, keeping the line and try to do a good uh, lap to, to be very close to the one in front for the main straight. While we still see the rollout ongoing here in Barcelona, it's a good time to have a look back to the race action in the first two races. The hashtag Race Home Charity Racing Series brings together the six Audi DTM factory drivers with six sim racers plus two guest starters. And what an exciting show the first two races have delivered for the spectators. It has been head-to-head -head racing throughout the whole grid. DTM drivers against each other. Teammates versus teammates. Real-life racing drivers against the sim racers from the virtual world. The battle for victory in the super final went right down to the checkered flag. And so far, in both races, the design contest winner crossed the finish line first. Can Robin Freins or his fellow Audi DTM colleagues put a stop to that winning streak? Let's find out. The two ab drivers, Nico Muller and Robin Freins, not only have a lot of fun with sim racing, they're also successful. Freins will start today's third race of the hashtag Race Home Series as the leader of the standings. At the second round of the virtual Formula E, both ab drivers made it onto the podium just as they did on Sunday at the first race of the virtual DTM Classics. And maybe one of the two will manage the first victory in sim racing today. Rene Rast is not on the grid today due to another commitment. After not making it to the semi-final at Monza, another setback in the title fight for the DTM champion. His stand-in today at Audi Sport Team Rosberg is DTM rookie Fabio Scherer. Again this week, lots of cool designs for the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo have been uploaded to the PlayStation Network. This time, the winner comes from Japan. The guest car of WRT is driven by long-distance driver Dries Van Tor this time. And there is hashtag race home now, also in Japan, with a regional time attack challenge. The circuit to Catalonia, Barcelona, is the scene for the next round of hashtag race home. 4.6 kilometers, 16 turns, 6 left. Men. And 10 of them are right-handers. Uh, thank you, Nico. Uh, we are about ready for Q1. 
Why is that laugh? And that was Robin Frines. Because you're leaving you. And there is the grid then. And there is Nico Muller. Have you ever seen Nico Muller without a baseball cap on? Only when he's wearing a crash helmet. Ball position is with Seiichi Onuma and Andreas Zurch alongside. And let's go and get into Q1. Is damage on? Damage on? I would say so. Is there damage? Yeah, it would be good to know. Yeah, on mute, uh, please. That uh, would be nice. So, uh, requesting uh, confirmation. Damage is off. And uh, there you can hear damage is off. And Nico Muller is off like a scolded rat. Straight into P1. Robin Frines with contact there. No, it's not his pyjamas he's wearing. It is a really rather lovely Audi Sport T-shirt. He's not going to have an early night after this. So, Robin Frines up to P2, of course. He is in the uh, hashtag race home championship, uh, the championship leader. So the two DTM stars then, P1 and P2, Nico Muller P1, Robin Freins is P2, then it's Andreas Zurch, and then Stefan Vachau is P4. Look at the concentration! As Robin Freins does his level best to get on terms with Nico Muller. There is Stefan Vachau then for Phoenix Racing, the Phoenix livery. A logo down the side of this uh, extraordinary Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo car. But there is the Q1 leader, Nico Muller. Three laps of this demanding circuit to uh, Catalonia, which of course is located in Montmelo here in Barcelona. And Nico Muller fighting with the steering wheel and Stefan Vachau taking a very wide line to uh, try and get past Andreas Search, who gets very sideways. That plays into the hands of uh, Vachau, who is able to occupy now that P3 position. Here comes Robin Freins then. He's about a second down on Nico Muller. Look, the smile all over his face as he's given it everything. Break, break, break. Oh, and carried just a little bit too much speed. That was not the ideal line Robin threw there, and that's cost you possibly some tenths. But he is continuing to fight and to chase uh, his uh, teammate Nico Muller. Both, of course, top Audi DTM drivers. And uh, really crossing his hands up there. Looking more smooth now, and smoothness is paying off. But I'll tell you what, Stefan Vachau in uh, P3 is uh, beginning to just get a little bit closer to Robin Freins here. Nico Muller has built a very, very comfortable margin of uh, some 2.1 seconds over this man, Robin Freins. There is our Q1 leader, Nico Muller. Breaks for the left-hander. It's the hairpin, he gets it absolutely perfect. Doing a great job here through the chicane, being chased by Robin Freins. Look at the concentration on Nico Muller's face then as he holds it all together. He's very much aware of the fact as we cross now to Stefan Vachau. And if there was any doubting of Stefan Vachau's credibility, look at the trophies alongside him as he fights with the um, Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo car around this circuit to Catalonia. We are on the second of the uh, three laps. Andreas Zurch then is uh, currently running P5, but Nico Muller, Robin Freins and Stefan Vachau are the one, two, three currently. On to the third and uh, final lap then. And are we going to see any position changes before we see the chequered flag? What can Robin Freins throw at this now? Absolutely everything! As the tyres squeal in protest around the right-hander in his quest to get on terms with Nico Muller. Bear in mind, Robin Freins is the championship leader currently. Needs to bank everything he possibly can. Just kisses the apex on the in and on the out. Perfect line there from Robin Freins. But Nico Muller has done such a good job in terms of building that comfort margin as they go across the sector line. Hard on the brakes then for this really uh, Demanding left-hander. Bit of wheel spin from the back end of the car. And this is where Nico is a little neater than Robin. He just takes a slightly tighter line. And Robin, despite throwing absolutely everything at it, I think, barring some disaster for Nico Muller, 
Uh, Robin's going to have to settle for P2. This could be Nico Muller's victory as he heads towards the checkered flag. Let's hear the celebration. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Slightly understated. Thank you. I did do the quickest lap, though. Well done, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the slipstream, you know, it was the slipstream. Yeah, sure, mate. <laughs> Why didn't wait, man? I was too scared that you would pull yeah. away into this. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Well done to Nico Muller, the winner of a Q1. Uh. This was quite a dominant victory of the two upped guys, with Robin starting from the last position as the championship leader. And I think he was asking the same question as last time, why I am starting last, because our rules say the championship leader has to start last in this qualification race. But still, he worked his way up to second place very quickly, Tom. So this was Robin again, like we have seen him in the first races. It was uh, very interesting, the first, uh, the first part of the, <coughs> of the race. I mean, Nico got away very cleanly and Frenz was up to second quite early. But uh, those two, they were very um, controlling and at a very high pace, both of them. You could see Robbie, Robin was a bit frustrated. He couldn't close on Nico, who did an extremely good job and won deservedly. So uh, I look forward for further races today. Nico, it's working quite well for you at the moment. You had very good races in Formula E on Saturday and in the classic DTM on Sunday. And now back again here, very, very far in front. Will it be the first victory today? I hope so. No, I mean, uh, we will see. I mean, it's, all, it's mainly about the fun and we're having a lot of fun. Uh, I hung myself onto the tail of Robin uh, during the weekend in the Formula E and the DTM uh, races and learned from him. So, uh, no, it's, it's cool to, to battle out on track against guys I usually only meet uh, on the real racetrack. So, uh, no, having a lot of fun, but uh, we all want to win in the end when it's when it's about competing you always have that desire to win and uh, I'll try definitely today to make his life hard and there will be some other guys uh, fighting for the win for sure so uh, yeah let's see so maybe you have to give some lessons to Lucas de Grassi and, and Daniel who were struggling a bit in the first race in the Formula E well I mean Obviously, it's, a, it's anyway different to, to reality. You cannot really blame anyone if he, if he doesn't take it too seriously and maybe uh, doesn't invest a bit of time in, in practicing because in the end, that's what you need. Yeah, you always have to give yourself time to adapt a little bit. But um, yeah, we will see. I mean, uh, some, some take it a bit more seriously than others. And uh, yeah, and anyone how he likes it. Frank, can you see the improvement of Nico and especially of Nico starting from the first race and now to the third round? Definitely. It was a very impressive performance uh, in the first, uh, first qualifying now. And um, you can easily see that they are more clean, more precise, more fluent. So it's, it's getting better and better. And uh, then also overtaking is more difficult. I mean, in the first few races, we saw a lot of uh, position changes because people were doing mistakes. And uh, with more experience, less mistakes, it's getting more tough to, to uh, catch the other one. Yeah, this is, of course, not so easy for our guest drivers. We had two victories of the guest drivers in the first two races. But, of course, with the experience gained by the DTM drivers especially, this could be very, very difficult now from onwards to the next races. So let's see what the guest drivers are all about and how you can participate yourself in this championship. If you want to compete against the DTM stars of Audi at Hashtag Race Home, you have three options. Number one, the design contest. Every week, the DTM drivers choose the coolest design. The winner is allowed to take part in the race, like today, Seiichi Onuma from Japan. A special feature, the pole position in the first three qualifying races is reserved for the three guest drivers. Option number two, the WRT guest car. The Audi Motorsport Communications team are deciding the drivers. For example, Sandy Sulvik, GT3 champion from Thailand, who was unlucky at Monza when his car stalled at the start. Today, it's Dries Vantor's turn, and exciting names will be in the next races as well. Last but not least, the auction. The third cockpit can be bought by auction every week via the hashtag Race Home website. And it doesn't have to be expensive. The minimum bid is just 50 euros. It goes without saying, but the proceeds are for a good cause.
we turn our attention to Q2 now with Dries Vantor going from P1. There's Mike Rockefeller. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, he will be going from... Uh, and it's good, actually, to see me finally get more practice. Uh, P5, that's P last. Um, uh, but Dries Vantor, P1, then it's Thomas Voigt, then Jamie Green, then Loic Duval. As the scene is set for Q2 here in uh, Spain. You can hear the crowd. And now you can hear the noise of these fantastic cars as we go racing into Q2 then. And keep your eyes on Mike Rockenfeller then. Look at this. Like a catapult down the inside line and just a touch. What? Oh, and stay to the right. <laughs> and now with the controller it's difficult. But, you know, you had that excuse already. Yeah, be careful, I'm just behind you. Mike Rockefeller and Lloyd Duval then uh, contesting the uh, physicality of Mike's uh, up into P3. I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> now do bear in mind that Frank Beeler is watching every single move made here as Jamie Green in oh, P2. On my bumper. Exactly, it's all you. And Dries Vantor, P1. Jamie Green, P2. And Jamie improved quite a bit as well, I think. Oh. And uh, there is Loic Duval, then. Look at the menacing eyes. Only for four corners. <laughs> and Jamie Green. <laughs> oh, that was... Ah, come on, Loic. That was meant. I told you to <laughs> the right. Whoa. Welcome to the RCCO. Hey, now, OK, now it's enough. Yeah, come on! A race home, banger race, brilliant! Dries Van Tor leads, Jamie Green, B2. Uh, then ah. <laughs> Mike Rockefeller and Loic Duval having their own ding-dong battle here in this uh, Q2 race. Where's the race director, Loic? We need the race director. I'm sure you you and me will have a yellow car. No, 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 position change anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> All smiles hey, Loiki. Uh, from uh, Lloyd Duval and uh, Mike Rockefeller and, of course, uh, Frank Beeler. His notepads, hair being pulled out, you name it, as he tries to keep up with this lot. Of course, what it's all doing is playing into the hands of Dries Vantor, who's up the road. And despite Jamie Green doing his level best to get on terms with Dries Vantor, uh, Jamie's rearview mirror is full of this man that we're on board with, or we were on board with, uh, that being... Uh, Mike Rockefeller. In the meantime, this is Dries Vantor, cool as a cucumber, uh, with a margin of some uh, 1.5, uh, 1.6 seconds now, as Mike Rockefeller is now on Jamie Green. This is the fight for P2. So, Mike Rockefeller then pursuing the Jamie Green car, which is currently P2, into the left-hander here. Tire squeal under protest. Loss of wheel spin as the loud pedal is thrashed through the floor of his controller. Uh, on board with uh, Jamie Green. Now looking back from Jamie Green at the pursuing Mike Rockefeller, and Mike's getting ever closer, ever closer, and now dives to the inside of Jamie Green. What's Jamie got to say about that? Hello, Mike. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think you get a good toe. Last lap. Oh, maybe not. Push. Yeah, yeah. Let's try to catch him. So, Mike Rockefeller now up to P2. Please not. Oh. And uh, Dries Vantor leading. Jamie Green relegated to P3. Thomas Voigt is uh, P4. Lloyd Duval is uh, P5. That's the way it looks so far. It's quite stressy with a controller, to be honest. <laughs> well, I guess. Yeah, don't tell me you are using a controller. I am, really am. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but it's quite stressy with the steering wheel as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine British humour there. Uh, from Jamie Green, who, of course, was P2 for ages, and he's now P3 on account of the fact Mike Rockefeller has gone through, but Jamie Green is not finished with this yet. Because we are on the last lap. A few more turns to do. What can Jamie find to pursue and get past my Rockefeller? And can he do it? Well, a little nudge might help here. Oh! Hey, Jamie. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that coming. Cool. <laughs> oh, man. I was just waiting. 
You need to go quicker. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. <laughs> so, a brilliant battle between my Rockefeller and Jamie Green, of course. Uh, Jamie then uh, taking a slight swipe at Mike Rockefeller. Damn it. Uh, but he held on to it beautifully. And uh, Dries Ooh. Mantor is going to be victorious. Hey, congrats, <laughs> Dries. Not Thank bad you. with the controller. I think it's easier with the controller, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Must be. <laughs> Must be, exactly. <laughs> <coughs> Do bear in mind, Dries Vantor winning that uh, Q session, then using a controller. Hey, Loic, we need to have a talk. <laughs> Loic Duval, so it was uh, Dries Vantor, my rock and fella, Jamie Green, the uh, top three. And once again, congratulations to Dries Vantor in the winner's circle. So we've seen another guest driver winning a race here at Race Home. Dries, have you been practicing the whole afternoon? No, no, I've I've been I've been practicing like 15 minutes. Um, when I got the car and everything, I decided I did some laps. Uh, but yeah, it's big fun and uh, looking forward to the next few races already. I guess you are not new to sim racing, but maybe new to PlayStation. Well, not really. When I well, I'm still young, but when I was a bit younger, uh, I played a lot of PlayStation, and I also actually played Gran Turismo as well. Um, so I'm familiar with the game, but uh, it's been a while since I've played this game. So Tom, quite an impressive drive from him. Yeah, very impressive. I uh, I enjoyed it. He uh, he was simply just from the word go a good a good start. And he benefit a little bit from the competition or the the fights between um, Rocky, Green, and uh, Duval on the opening lap, but nevertheless, he just kept making the gap bigger. So, very impressive performance by um, by Dries, absolutely. And Frank, there were some team internal battles between Loic and Mike, and he was calling for the race director. What can you say about this? Yeah, it was a bit close, and uh, Loic is, I think, one of the aggressive ones, as we know. Uh, not only in real racing, also in zim racing. So uh, he was touching uh, Rocky a little bit, but then um, a few meters later, he uh, went wide anyway, and Rock uh, Rocky could pass him again. So that's why I did not uh, give a real warning there. But I think they should be uh, should be careful because I mean, sooner or later, we have to come to the point where we put some some warnings and yellow cards and so on. So uh, please uh, behave, guys. Be careful. Yeah, so three DTM riders have been in this race, and we asked them after the last round what was their best moments of race home so far. Uh, there's been some cool designs, so it's interesting to see every week. And um, it's in also quite cool that so far the winners of the events have, have both been guests, um, not professional racing drivers, uh, but clearly people that spend a lot of time doing Gran Turismo. My best racing scene so far was Spa, was the final. I was racing against the fan who uh, who won the um, designer contest. Uh, we were we were side by side for basically the whole lap, so it was really fair, um, hard racing. It was super clean from the start until the finish line. Um, very cool racing. At the end, uh, the the guest driver won the race, so that was also cool to watch. Both finals have been pretty nice, you know, side by side and quite close in terms of performance, so that was cool. Uh, but my personal one in terms of, um, of racing, I think the, the semi-final in Monza, uh, when during two or three laps, we've been together with Robin and, and Nico, uh, really side by side, changing position. It was a, a pretty fair one, a clean, a clean one, which is not easy on the, on the PlayStation. Uh, for the whole six laps, pretty much, we were changing positions, uh, yeah, sector by sector, corner by corner nearly, banging wheels, having some slight contact, but the racing has always been very fair and uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And here we go with Q3 and Christian Rainley is P1 alongside him. A DTM rookie, when we go back to DTM racing, he'll be racing for uh, WRT. Uh, that is a Fabio Scherer. Welcome, Fabio. Bettina Schuller, Björn Skotka, and Mikael Nemas all on the grid as well. We are about to get Q3 underway. Stand by. 
Fabio Shearer is poised. So too is Mikhail Nemas. Let's go racing. Good start from Mikhail Nemas then. Björn Skotka on the inside of him, but it is in uh, P1. Christian Rainley, but for how long? So Fabio Shearer taking a look at the inside line, but look at Mikhail Nemas up to P3 already and uh, already pushing Fabio Shearer, who has taken the lead away from uh, Christian Rainley. So it is Fabio Shearer then. What a debut he's making. Mikhail Nemas, also a brilliant job, and now finds himself in P2. Great driving from Mikhail Nemas. Controlling that car absolutely perfectly, and now within his target sights is Fabio Shearer, who is running in P1, got something like seven tenths of margin over Mikhail Nemas, who's doing the chasing at the moment. Björn Skotka is P3. There is the concentration from Mikhail Nemas as he's weaving that uh, steering wheel around this circuit to Catalonia, Barcelona. Björn Skotka with a big, bold move up the inside. And Bettina Schürrle now fighting with Björn Skotka. But while all that's going on, Mikhail Nemas puts himself in P1. Fabio Shearer into the right-hander. Takes a swipe at Mikhail Nemas. Oh, Scotty. <laughs> and that's Bettina Schürrle. Sorry. Uh, with an apology from Björn Skotka. But look at Mikhail Nemas. He has got the lead over Fabio Scherer. We still have two laps left to run, though, and this is not done by any means. Fabio Scherer now takes a look at the inside, and Mikhail Nemas runs him onto the grass. Whoa, a touch. Hey, soll denn das? I think that's swearing in German. <laughs> Fabio Scherer is now back in P1, and Mikhail Nemas in P2, and look at Bettina Scherler into P3 and pursuing Mikhail Nemas now. Great driving from Bettina Schuller. She's seen off Jörn Skotka and now is ready to try and wrestle away P2 from Mikhail Nemas who gets just a little bit sideways. That allows Bettina Schuller to get just a little bit closer to Mikhail Nemas now. So Mikhail is right in the middle of this and is hunting but being hunted at the same time. It's all playing into the hands of Fabio Scherer, who's escaping up the road, as Mikhail Nemas knows he's got to defend this P2 position from Bettina Scherler. So Fabio Scherer just keeps a weather eye on the uh, screen to see where Mikhail Nemas is, but already he's built up a margin of uh, very nearly 1.3 seconds over this P2, P3 fight that's going on. So Bettina Scherler then, Pursuing very much Mikhail Nemas, but just keep your eyes on Björn Scotty Skotka, who's getting closer in P4 as well and fancies P3. So, as they cross the timing line now, we're going to start the last lap. And Bettina, that was just a little smile there as she looks to the inside of Mikhail Nemas. Mikhail, though, carries a little bit more speed, but. Is this where Bettina is going to be able to take advantage of the wayward back end of the Mikhail Nemas car? Well, not for the moment. But we've got the remainder of the uh, 4.6 kilometer lap here and the last lap. Mikhail Nemas cool as a cucumber. Bettina Schuller doing the chasing. Jörn Skotka just waiting to pounce if these two should go awry in the battle for P2. Fabio Shearer's almost checked out and Mikhail Nemas is in the gravel. So he loses out on uh, that P2 place and also loses P3 as well by just pushing and trying too hard. And it was great driving from Bettina Schuller, who just kept the pressure on. And eventually, the pressure saw the demise of Mikhail Nemas. What can she do to get on terms with Fabio Scherer? I think it's going to be too much of an ask, to be honest, here at the uh, Circuit de Catalunya. Fabio Shearer's got enough of a margin to be able to hold on, but Bettina is throwing absolutely everything at this. Oh, no! This could cost that P2 place. She's on the grass and the gravel, and she's spun around now. So Björn Skotka is up to P2. 
this, of course, has elevated Mikel Nemes to P3. And then Christian Rainley will be P4. But it is Fabio Scherer making his debut in for the DTM champion, Rene Rast. Fabio Scherer wins from Bjorn Skotka. Then it's Mikel Nemes recovering to take P3 ahead of Christian Rainley and Bettina Schoeller, who tried her level best. And all credit to her, a brilliant race. But in the winner's circle, it is going to be Fabio Scherer. Congratulations. There was quite some action ongoing in this race, and we saw a lot of passing, a lot of gravel moments, and one scene particularly, there was some complaint from Michael Niemas. Frank, what can you say as a race director? Um, the thing is, uh, I, I only saw it from very far behind, so uh, we have to keep an eye on it, and maybe we can check it again. But uh, it, it, it looked really uh, very, very close, and I, but I could not judge who was pushing who. So uh, maybe we have to rely on what people say, so and then we have to take a decision. It's, it's definitely, I mean, we saw the first two races very clean and even overtaking with no problems. So that's what they should have in mind. And uh, even though it's, it's, uh, it's sim racing, we have to behave well and uh, try to do a uh, clean overtaking. So uh, let's see what we have to decide there. Fabio, I saying, think Michael was complaining about you, about this attack and this contact there in turn one. Maybe you can explain what happened there. Uh, yeah, he was waving quite hard, actually. And then I got to the right side. And then uh, I didn't have too many space and I break uh, with small contact and, and that's it. So difficult to say more about it. So Tom, that's a typical racing driver explanation. <laughs> it's, uh, it's on the first page, absolutely. Um, I think the race in general it was, uh, was very good. You saw that Obviously, the mix, the, with the mix of drivers in this uh, in this Q3, you saw some people overdoing it a bit, and actually they were up to third, they were up to second, and then they got back to a third or fourth again, and vice versa. You could see they overdoing, overstepping it a little bit. So I'm sure there will be um, the people progressing. There's also some who will be pretty sad about not progressing, as it looked like they have the opportunity to do it. So. Um, a lot of things happening, but um, Fabio uh, deserved winner, uh, even though that you will still have to get him at the table with, uh, with Frankie later, maybe. No investigation. No investigation, but the rules of our series say it's a bit like soccer, so you get a yellow card for a thing like this, and if you have three yellows, this will get your result away. And what is typical for this race home series in RCCO is that we see real racing drivers mixed with, let's say, hobby racing drivers or normal. We have it in slot car in RCCO. Since 30 years, we have been racing in slot cars with cool slot racing drivers and a lot of professional racing drivers. Have a look. Founded in 1991 as the editorial championship of Rally Racing Magazine, the RCCO today is probably the longest existing and most famous slot car racing series in the world. The RCCO has been showcasing the fun of electric mobility in a 1 to 24 scale for 30 years. The season's highlight is a 24 hour race in the Autostadt in Wolfsburg with prominent guest drivers such as Mike Rockenfeller. Im realen äh, Rennen fühle ich mich ein bisschen sicherer, weil ich äh, da zumindest denke, dass ich das einigermaßen kann. Hier ähm, würde ich sagen, muss ich das noch beweisen, also es ist, ist nicht the einfach. Big, small Racing Series is a networking platform with a close connection to real racing. Many prominent racing drivers have already tried their luck with the controller, including Matthias Ekström and then a very young Sebastian Vettel. The RCCO has now transferred the concept, which has proven itself for 30 years, to sim racing. First in the RCCO eSports series and in the RCCO hashtag race home charity racing series. But that's just the start. The makers of RCCO are working on a bigger project. 30 years of RCCO slot car racing this year, many victories for Frank Bieler. He took five victories in the 24 hours of Hamburg. It's a little 1 to 24 scale slot car at the moment this series 
is on hold as well as all the big racing series because of the coronavirus. And that's a good thing that we have this eSports series here, the RCXO eSports series, and of course this great race home series. And we are keen now and eager to see what's happening in Q4. And it's Q4 and the biggest grid of them all. And sharing the front row, Robin Freins and Mike Rockefeller. So what is it, top three or top four? Still top three. And of course, Robin Freins has points. And when you lead the championship, you don't need to know anything. Oh, man. A lot of points. Uh, behind Robin and Mike, we find Skotka, Green, Vashav, Nimas, Zerch, Rainley, Foyt, Onuma, Duval, and Bettina Scherler. <laughs> Oh, hey, a rocky. A great start. It was good to start, no? How do you do it? What do you mean? He's quick on the loud pedal, Robin. That's how he does it. You inside? Oh, Robin Frines. That's not really. Let's try to get away first. Yeah, yeah, I was doing the same. <laughs> so Mike Rockefeller and Robin Frines, B1 and B2. I'm inside yep. now. Inside, inside. Inside. Okay, go, go. Stay inside, don't go outside. Some friendly advice from Jamie Green being offered as well. Uh, the order is Frines, Rocky, Bjorn Skotka, then Jamie Green. The one, two, three, four. Hey, man, go. Hey, what do you think I'm trying? <laughs> <laughs> Robin Frines is leading the way, but Mike Rockefeller is pushing him for everything that he's worth here. Uh, six laps of the circuit to Catalonia here, Barcelona. And the big, big grid of cars then uh, to do battle. And uh, currently it is uh, Robin Frines leading Mike Rockefeller. Uh, then it is Bjorn Skotka, who very quietly has found himself in P3 ahead of uh, uh, Jamie Green. Then it's Mikhail Nemas, Stefan Vashau, Andreas Search, and Loic Duval is uh, P8 at the moment. So just three tenths between these two. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, Robin Frines and Mike Rockefeller. Uh, race director. Hey, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Just trying to grass him up to Frank. Just a kiss. Just say hi. Love tap. That's all it was, Robin. Oh, I have a kind of a toe, I would say. Kind of. Go inside. Go, uh, wind shadow. The wind shadow. <laughs> famous wind race shadow. home wind shadow. <laughs> Ooh, my days. Rockefeller now in the lead. That was a famous breaking to blade. Jamie Green pursuing. Come on, Rocky. Yeah, let 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 me try a lap. I followed you yeah. for a lap. <laughs> you feel the pressure or what? Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> so it is uh, Rocky and then Frines. Oh. And come on. That was close. A lap. It's not one corner. It was close. Fuck. Oh, forgive the language from uh, my Rockefeller. They are gaining, huh? I don't know, but. Yeah, maybe we should go, that's what I'm saying. Yes, you are really, between the uh, fight that you're having, of course, it's allowing everyone else, man, including slow. Uh, Jamie Green, to get close oh, to you. Oh man, I was thinking the same with you. <laughs> Fantastic fight between these two. Come on, Rocky. I'm not attacking you, huh? It's absolutely compelling. Mike Rockefeller currently leading from Robin Frines, who is uh, P2. There's been a little bit of uh, contact between the two of them. There is Robin Frines, look at this. Absolutely trying to pursue Mike Rockefeller. Mike, though, closer through that right-hander. And here comes Jamie Green, who is involved in his own battle here with uh, Mikhail Nemas. And it's going to be Stefan Vashau as Mikhail Nemas goes very, very wide. And Stefan Vashau for the Phoenix Racing Team. And Jamie Green is steadfast in that P3 position as Mike Rockefeller crosses the timing line ahead of Robin Freins. Much Mike. faster. Three seconds. I know it was the start, but... By just two tenths, but here's Robin Frines up the inside into turn one. Robin Frines converts that P2 uh, to P1. You just really rather get the impression that Mike Rockefeller and Robin Frines are, are playing with us and having great fun out there in this hashtag race home a Q4 session. We're on board with Mike Rockefeller now. You can see the marbles on the outside of the track. Be careful of those, Mike. But Robin Frines, I think now, and Mike realizes this, you can tell by the seriousness on his face now, he realizes that Robin is not playing anymore. No, Robin means business, and points make prizes, and at the moment, Robin has the most of those points. 
So Mike Rockefeller then chasing him. P1, Robin Freins. P2, Mike Rockefeller. P3, Jamie Green. Then it is uh, Mikhail Nemas, Stefan Vachau, Light Duval, Andreas Search, and Bettina Schola has just lost that uh, P8 to Bjorn Skotka. So Robin Freins, Mike Rockefeller then. Jamie Green going to be one to watch here as well. We're about half distance in this uh, Q session, Q4 this is. Hashtag race home, we're in Barcelona where of course all of us, whether drivers, race directors, presenters or commentators are doing it for charity. Hey, the car doesn't like curves. Mike suggesting that his uh, Etron vision is not keen on curves. Hmm. I'm still in your slipstream. So, Mike Rockefeller trying to come back here. Oh, I Maybe try to optimize with a softer setup, Mike. <laughs> okay. That's uh, a good idea, Tom. Yeah. Maybe just softer springs and maybe keep the roll bar. Maybe go up on the roll bar or the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, to make a pit stop. You are leading, so you could make a small pit stop. A small one only? Yeah, it has to be fast. You have to okay. get... Yeah, but I'm with Phoenix, you know? We are king of pit stops. Yeah. So there I'm not worried at all. I think there Robin should be worried a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> well, no comment. <laughs> oh, sorry, Hans Moser just texted me. He just tell me, just they are on. ready. Just get on with it. He tells me. Ah, okay, sorry. I I, I thought he told you they are waiting in the pits. What a brilliant <laughs> conversation as Tom Christensen, of course, our presenter, along with uh, Thomas Voigt, uh, making recommendations to Mike Rockefeller with regards to the setup and. Not only that, uh, Ernst Moser from the Phoenix Racing Team getting involved as well. Absolutely brilliant dialogue between uh, all these people at uh, Hashtag Race Home. Hi, everyone having the same steering wheel, apart from the two I know who hasn't. Is it the same steering wheels you have, guys? No. Nope. No. no. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie. Stole, the, stole the one from the kids. Yeah, stole my kids' one. Jamie, you, yeah, just for a, a fast corner, you have to turn almost twice when you are, I see. Yeah. Go oh, outside, go outside. I think I'm going to try your setup tips. <laughs> so, uh, Jamie Green at a real disadvantage as. A oh, good fight here. Robin Frines and Mike Rockefeller go into this ding dong battle. With Very Robin clean Frines. racing, Robin and Rocky. Very clean and very good racing between the two of them as well. This is uh, Q4. Frines to the inside of my Rockefeller now. Good line. <laughs> but Robin, of course, has got the inside for the next one. So, between Robin Frines and Mike Rockefeller, there is the width of a cigarette paper and no more. By Jiminy, this is close for P1 in this. Looks like you did that before. Race. That you have done that before in your life. What? The fighting. Uh, Robin Frines bringing Ooh. all his experience. Uh, so too, Mike Rockefeller, and they are providing a brilliant spectacle for us to enjoy. This is great. Oh. oh. <laughs> and they're enjoying it every bit as much as we are as well. I'm so bad in this corner. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the thing is just going, going straight. I think I will, I will talk to Tom. Maybe he can be my engineer for the next round and do some setup. Oh, but that corner, that corner in Barcelona is the worst corner anyway. Ah, it is. I, it's, uh, it's very uh, authentic. You, you do defend. Have a lap? You defend. Listen, Rocky. Tom is busy with presenting duties. You know he can't be your engineer as well. <laughs> so. It's Robin Frines P1, Mike Rockefeller uh, P2, but this is the last lap. We are on lap six of six. Robin Frines, Mike Rockefeller, Jamie Green, Mikhail Nemas, Stefan Vachau. There's Robin Frines, all smiles at the moment. Is that the, is that the ideal line, Robin? Yeah, it's just okay, picking it's up Robin, you know, for, for the weight. It's ah, the weight this, distribution. This way around. I can see Tom making notes now as to the uh, best lines. One more chance. <laughs> uh, like he didn't know. Hugely successful racing driver. Oh. Oh. Sorry. I didn't touch you, but... <clears throat> no, yeah, just not. You'll note... But I lost it. Man! ...that Mike Rockefeller does apologize. So don't say sorry. Oh, Tom! Yeah, you're right, but I thought... You know, with this game, you never know. Yeah. If, if 
you touch or not. It's really... Yeah, you touched before. Yeah, this I need, this I recognize. So Tom is suggesting then. Guess you as well, huh? Uh, the politeness can be thrown out of the yeah, window. That's called me already. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. It's like again. Come on, you're heading towards the checkered flag, you two. Who's it gonna be? Robin Frines ah. or Mike Rockenfeller? B1 and P2. Robin Frines has got the head. He's got the checkered flag. What a race! Good job, Robin. Yes. That was nice. Ah, uh, there is well, no you question me, no? that there was a, a little me. bit of contact between the two of you, but all's fair. Let's see. In love and war, I would suggest. I will watch the replay. Brilliant guys. entertainment. Thank you, guys. That was a superb Q4 session. Really, really enjoyed that. And, of course, not for the first time. Uh, one Mr. Robin Frines will be making his way into our virtual winner's circle to celebrate that victory. Uh, well done, Robin. There is the car. Wow, another cool race here in Q4 with... Robin Frines and Mike Rockenfeller fighting almost the whole race distance. Really clean racing, Tom, wasn't it? It was very good, very impressive. And, uh, and just the, the talk they had and the concentration at the, the, during the whole race, they were very, very close. They changed places uh, quite often. And just uh, towards the end, it looked like Robin was getting the upper hand and, and Mike on the last lap tried a late break maneuver, but it's actually cost him a few a few car lengths but that was the most there was between them throughout the entire race so um, very impressive performance by both of them they're really getting into it and uh, they start to to feel similar things like what they do when they're racing in barcelona uh, like corner like corner 12 and uh, <clears throat> the way that when when they are defending and uh, robin is uh, very good at both in defending and certainly also to put uh, fast lap times in. So uh, he has shown again, he is the man to beat in this championship. Robin, are you the man to beat? Well, very hard to say. I mean, he's been very close but uh, with Rocky the whole time. I couldn't really pull away and um, it was, was good battling with him. Uh, always very fun, very, uh, very fair. Uh, so it's it's definitely not over, and uh, every little mistake you you do, uh, you get um, yeah penalized straight away. So it's going to be difficult. So into the semi-final now, Robin Frines. Frines, this was a race battle. Which you like as a race director? Very clean, very tough fighting for P1. So that's what we want to see. Absolutely perfect. Mike, how was it from your point of view? Oh, it was like Robin said. Uh, he's he's really good in that in this game, and uh, I'm trying to improve. Uh, I I have two kids, so it's a bit more difficult for me to practice. I think Robin is trying to make two kids, so maybe he's also busy. But uh, definitely, uh, he's he's really fast. So I'm I'm having fun, and it felt just like in the real race when we were battling. So uh, hope to to battle more times in a real car with Robin because it's always. Uh, a lot The semi final awaits. Oh, my niggas and Paul. <laughs> ah. Finally! You will not see turn two, mate. Yeah, no, man. <laughs> uh, where are you? I'm Let's scared. Keep it clean, guys. People. Some friendly banter from Nico Muller and various other of the uh, competitors who will compete in this semi final. Fabio Shearer then not saying very much and letting his racing do the talking. So Nico Muller then and Fabio Shearer. Nico Muller makes sure that he cements that P1. Look at Robin Frines already on a mission. Is he going to be up to P2 before turn number one? Well, he's certainly on the inside of Fabio okay, Shearer. on the right. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. <laughs> For that, I felt there was something on the right. I. Of course, became the outside, but... Hello again. <laughs> there he is, uh, Robin. Fighting hard. Oh! What the fuck, man? Forgive the language. Uh, that was not me. Who was oh, that? It was, it was um, Chef Hydra pushing uh, Robin into... Uh, 
So there we're finding out who. Well, mate. Thanks, guys. Is hitting who? Mm. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> oh, hello. You're not kidding. Uh, right. Come on, some sense of order here. Robin Fryne's my Rockefeller. Uh, Dries Vantor, Fabio Shearer relegated to P4. There's Dries Vantor again. Just look at the um, concentration. Realising that he's in with a podium possibility here as oh, Fabio Shera runs really, really wide. So too Jamie Green, I believe. So Robin Frein's leading Mike Rockefeller. Uh, there he is just seven tenths. Oh, all of a sudden, Mike. Smile, Rocky. Smile. <laughs> he's looking much more serious. Always, Tom. Tom Christensen saying, come on now, smile a bit, Rocky. Come on, give us one for the camera, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Fabio, but now you go packing in the woods, as Robin would say. Uh, packing in the woods. <laughs> A nice smile, incidentally, Mike Rockefeller. Uh, currently P2, but Robin Frein's under pressure. Oh! It was late, Robin. Very late. Very. Oh, man. Yeah, I have new brake pads for the race now. So. However, okay. Robin held on to it nicely, and still Mike Rockefeller is being denied. Even has time to scratch his nose. Look, well done, Robin Frines. P1, here comes my Rockefeller, though, trying to wrestle it away from him. Rocky, you should start to watch your mirrors. There's a... I know, I'm watching, I'm watching. Yeah. But, you know, the guy in front needs to go a bit faster. Hey, hey. Hey, what? What do you think I'm trying? I know. Dries Fantor is... Dries is coming. <laughs> yeah, he certainly is, and he's in P3. I'm trying, at least. I, mean, I don't know if it's going to work. I sure not. You also have to smile a bit, please, Fantor. So, uh, Tom Christensen's recipe for success here is lots of smiling. Uh, Robin Frines and Mike Rockefeller's gone back to serious mode, as you can see, because he's right in the middle of this sandwich now, between uh, Robin Frines and Tris Vansor, and Nico Muller's about to come calling as well. A limit! He's done it, Rocky has gone through into P1 ahead of Robin Frines, and here comes Dries Vantor on Frines now, which will allow Rocky to escape up the road, potentially. As we're about to start the last lap of this semi-final. I'm trying! What happens if I, can I push somebody on the straight or not? Oh, no, 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 no. oh here comes Robin! Ooh! I thought he was gonna give him a real shove, but, um, Robin holds on. Engine over ref. And so does Mike Rockefeller, the P1 and P2 at the moment. Are we going to see two DTM drivers in the super final? Is mechanical failures on? <laughs> so. Nope. So good. Nope. At least I can finish the race then. Concerned about mechanical failures as Robin goes side by side now. That was okay, no? Yes. Totally. I'm not allowed to say that. Müller closing on you three guys. Müller is closing. See, Tom Christensen, like me, has kept his eyes on Nico Muller, who's going to be there and ready to pounce if these three should get oh so physical. Jamie Green has been the quietest so far, and he's the one that potentially could really take advantage of this situation. A four-way fight for P1. Oh. What? Nico Muller and Jamie Green. Oh, why have a penalty? Four. Oh. Four. Hey, oh. come on. That was nice. Nico. Oh, fuck. Oh, Ish, apologies again for the language. Who, who pushed me off? That was me. Nico <clears throat> was good. Who pushed me? Who pushed me off? I didn't touch you. <laughs> Nico, the leader. Nico just went from P4 to P1 in one corner. <laughs> uh, and one hit, may I say, as well. Man, what man, the... man, 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 man. Uh, this is great. The what Swiss, I, the I told you it's the Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot Dries, be. Uh, Dries touched me and I pushed Rocky out. Ah, uh, uh, it wasn't even Nico. Uh, Nico, no, Nico, hit, Nico hit you. I touched and then... you. Yeah, 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 but a little bit. I touched because you I was... first and then I don't know. <laughs> yeah, then it was all fine. But... Rock, is, is, is that aggressive? We, we, call, we call it aggressive or not? Yeah, I think definitely aggressive is the word. I don't know, I didn't uh, push that, race, but... uh, Maybe we should do it again because it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we can I, do it again. I got okay. pushed off. All so. good, guys. Again. It is what it is. And it's great fun. I think I deserve the final, but it's okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> Robin, you and me, huh? Yeah, exactly. See, we are always fair, and then two other people come. What yeah, did I do to it. you, man? Stop complaining. No, you, you, you nothing. It's... 
Uh, I got pushed off and then I got I was on the grass so I can't know yeah, it's good. Sure, sure man, sure. <laughs> oh, Watch I love the replay. It. I love it you two these replays are um, really showing just how uh, uh, fraught the fight was and an extraordinary fight it was between all of those four that were vying for P1. Close racing here in the semi final, how we expected, is really, really cool racing. Sometimes a little bit over the edge, there were some contacts which were not so okay. Frank, I think we will see some yellow cards when we do the review of the race, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we will. I mean, there were four cars um, um, battling for, yeah, finally for first place, actually. Uh, for the first so for the first two i mean two people are going to the to the final so um i mean nico was was a bit uh hard i think he he was very late on break <laughs> he he was passing two two guys and and then touched uh, rocky in the back so in the rear so i think uh, that must be a yellow card but um let's see what we can see in the in the, in the reviews and um, then we have to take a decision uh, it's it's tough because they are all so close and, and fighting fighting very very hard, so difficult to to take decisions to be honest. Tom, how did you see this race? Nico was a bit unlucky in the beginning of the race when he got touched by another car. Yeah, it, it was. On uh, already at turn four, Nico was touched in the back, uh, no fault of his own, and had to go to the gravel and was, was last. And he uh, made a phenomenal comeback. And on the last lap, he managed to get into it. It was a four-car fight on the last lap with a, with the leader of Rockefeller, with Fringe and Dries van Tor third, uh, until corner ten, and uh, into the braking on the back straight. He overcooked it a little bit. At the same time, Rocky was defending from Robin, and then it all became chaos at that point. And I closed my eyes for some <laughs> seconds and saw the finish was not at all like it was going into corner 10. So um, anti-climax to this race. It was a bit of the DTM style, Nico. We've seen things like this happening in DTM on yeah, last lap decisions. How was this last lap for you, Nico? Yeah, as Tom mentioned, I had, to, had some catching up to do. And uh, I just managed to catch the three guys in the front uh, in turn nine. And then they were going into turn 10, three wide. And I was trying to find that gap and didn't manage to slow the car down uh, as, as I wish I could. And I touched Rocky slightly in the back. So if Frankie does want to give me that yellow card today, I'll take it. It's worth a final. So uh, sometimes you need, to, you need to take the blame. And uh, I'm ready to do that today. Now as a pole sitter, you have the chance to describe the track to us. So you can do one additional lap describing this track in Barcelona. But before this, please tell us, a little bit about your headphones. They're looking really like out of space with this, with this lights on left and right side. Where are they from? From Formula E, actually. I'm not. I'm probably not. I shouldn't talk too much about it. But no, it's. Uh, I don't know. It, they look fancy. They work. The microphone somehow doesn't. So I, I pulled it out. But uh, at least I have sound. So that's what they're for. So some technical issues with all this setting up here for the sim racing. So Nico, please enter the track. Yeah, so we're exiting the pit lane. Uh, the grandstand on the left hand side on the main straight is very, very impressive. And it, um, it makes for a very impressive uh, sound spectacle as well when the, when the cars drive by. Extremely loud and reflecting that noise to the, to the pit lane area. So already being there is, is very exciting. Turn one, a very fast and flowing S leading into an extremely long right-hander, turn three. Um, yeah, in this car here, it's a lift. In high downforce cars, it's nearly flat. A lot of G-force on the neck. Heartbreaking into turn four. Also that, a very long right-hander. So the right-hand neck muscle is suffering a lot. It's a bit slower than turn three, leading into a downhill left-hand hairpin falling away a bit, so a lot of understeer usually. Uh, you can use a bit of exit curb there. Then we go into this left-right-hand sweep. Easy to run a bit too wide on exit and hit that sausage curb there. The floor of the race car doesn't like that. Turn 9 is a very impressive corner, very fast. It's pretty blind on turning, so you don't really see where you're going. Then uh, up towards the last sector, which starts with a big braking into turn 10, my favorite corner from the semi-final. 
a tight hairpin leading up to a left-hander which is nearly flat into a long right-hander nobody really likes that corner it's a bit of a pain a lot of understeer the car doesn't really want to turn and then we go into the new section of the barcelona track uh, this sh slow chicane which should pack up the field a bit to allow some overtaking after when we go on back on the main straight carrying as much speed as possible and that's the lap Thank you very much, Nico. So let's see who will win the super final, the shootout. One lap decides who is the winner of the third round of the RCCO Race Home Charity Racing Series. Both are looking very strong. They are very close. So good luck. And now it is the super final. And it will be contested by Dries Van Zora and Nico Muller. Nico Muller, pole position. Dries Van Zora alongside him. The one lap winner takes all shootout for the super final here in the hashtag race home event number three. We're live from Barcelona. And Dries Van Zora certainly looking focused as he will now pursue Nico Muller for all he's worth. Ahead of him, 16 turns, six of them left, 10 of them right-handers, and turn number one is the right-hander that Nico Muller goes through with Dries Van Tor right on his gearbox. So Dries will try everything he can to try and find a way past Nico Muller as they go side by side now. Fair racing room left by Nico Muller, which puts Dries Van Tor into P1. Here comes Nico Muller, though, trying to come back. The look of focus and concentration is more intense than we've seen all day today because Nico Muller really wants to win this super finale. But so too does Dries Van Tor, the left-hander, which takes you uphill into the right-hander, is where the cars are now. And it is Dries Van Tor who's doing a very good job here at holding off the advances of Nico Muller. This would be an extraordinary success story if Dries Van Tor, making his debut in the uh, hashtag Race Home series, is able to take this super final from Nico Muller. But Nico wants it badly. Van Tor, Muller, P1, P2. We have but a few more turns to do. Dries Van Tor takes a lot of curve. That slows him a little. There's the pit in. Dries Van Tor, I think, has done enough to be victorious in Barcelona. Ah, <laughs> messed up the last corner. Well done, Dries. Thanks. <laughs> was very well, close. It was a push. Uh, <laughs> you're good at parking at the apex, man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well done, guys. Wow, this was exciting, this super final, the third in a row, really with big, big, big excitement. It was open until the very last meter. It was a photo finish, like we call it. Tom, it was racing at its best, almost clean. I think one little push from Nico in the last, or third or fourth last corner, wasn't it? I think it was uh, racing on a very, very, they both knew what they were doing. And Dries, when he was able to make that slipstream out of turn three, getting into turn four, at that point, uh, he had the lead and he was defending very well and uh, making sure that he was not overshooting the apexes where, where Nico wants to take that extra bit of momentum through the corner. But there was Dries uh, doing uh, extremely well. So I would say over one lap, Dries uh, did a fantastic race. Over 10 laps, it might have to be a different uh, strategy he would have had. But over the one lap, he, uh, he beat the favorite what was decisive today for this victory? The race format we have is quite a bit different from what you are used to. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, after I yeah, only have one lap, so I got a toe out of turn three, like Tom said, and uh, could overtake him going into turn four. Yeah, and then it was all about defending it and uh, parking parking the bus in the middle of the corner. Uh, I've got so I had some some touches to the end, but it was all fair and nice. So uh, yeah, made it, made a loss, made a small mistake in the last corner. So it uh, was a nice photo finish uh, at the end. So you gave 
WRT, the first victory in the series. So the first victory for a DTM team comes for the custom, the team of Audi Sport. Vincent Foss, our good old friend, will be very happy, Frank, you know, very well. So Vincent is following the series very much. So it was good for him today, yeah? Yeah, I think he's very proud. I mean, uh, he's a very nice, very nice guy. I know him for a very long time and we were racing together. And uh, what he was doing with his team, I think so now it's probably for 10 years almost. Um, very, very impressive. And um, so that's another step, another thing. And uh, his first victory here, I think he, he will be very happy. Uh, was a fantastic race, very clean, very close. And uh, then in the last sector, there was no chance for Nico to get by um, unless he took some, he would have taken some unfair things uh, out of the pocket. But uh, I think um, his morning uh, on the race before made him behave a bit better. So we saw a clean and nice final and uh, tough racing. That's what we want to see. Nico, how was the super final from your perspective? It was cool. It was a very nice battle with, with Reese. Um, I got off the line well, but uh, obviously slipstreaming is, is also playing a big part here. And he got a good run on me on the exit of three. Uh, and uh, I did believe I would have another chance to, to get by, but he did an extremely good job at parking at the apexes and really uh, making sure that I would not be able to, to carry the momentum out of the corners. And I made a slight mistake by hitting him at the exit of turn seven. So I had a big gap going on to the back straight into turn 10. And um, yeah, there the last chance was gone. Or as Frankie said, the last fair chance was gone. Uh, everything, uh, every attempt in the last sector, I think would have been uh, committing suicide. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the, the photo finish we got. Would have loved to win, obviously, but uh, I think it was a good show. So three races in the books, three different winners, three times a guest driver. Of course, today a little bit different because this time it was a real racing driver taking the first victory here in the Race Home Charity Racing Series. And Robin Freins keeps the lead in the championship. And I think Nico Müller is as well there as is Mike Rockenfeller, who finished on the podium for a third consecutive time. So the DTM drivers are very, very much here in this championship fighting for the title. <clears throat> Next race is coming as early as next week. So stay tuned, follow us on social media, look for donations. You can get a cockpit in the series, look on our website and there you get all the information how you can be in a race yourself. Thank you very much, Tom, for joining us today again for this charity program and Frankie, you as well. See you next week and let's see which racetrack we are racing then.